Well, given this diagram, let's see why these three segments are congruent. Exercise 30. I've got these circles. I've colored them red and blue for your convenience. And, you know, we don't really know what measurement they are. And honestly, we don't even know which one's bigger. Because, in fact, it doesn't matter. But your drawing in your textbook looked a little bit like that. Let's just go back to Theorem 10.2. We know that tangent segments drawn to a common external point are congruent. So we just apply that twice here. Consider the segment right there. Right there, PA is congruent to PB. And then I could extend this. PB is going to be congruent to PC, right there. And finally, I could, well, if I needed to link the two together, then these two are congruent by the transitive property. So again, all three of these segments, one, two, three, these three segments are congruent, regardless of the size of the circles. Well, let's see if I can have two tangent lines to this circle and have them not meet. Right here, I'm demonstrating Theorem 10.1. I know, well, to say it the easiest way, this tangent line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. I've heard that enough. So let's change this diagram for this one. Now I've got two lines, J and K, red and blue. And clearly, if I move them like this, they certainly intersect. But if I were to line them up to make those, well, make those two radii into one diameter, then I would be saying, hey, that means these two lines, by theorem 311, they are perpendicular to the same line. Therefore, they are parallel. Well, let's see if we can demonstrate why this red ray BC is an angle bisector. Pretty straightforward. Let's do this. Oh yeah, that's the very definition of um, tangents there. We know they're perpendicular at the point of tangency. And let's see, then I've got um, two triangles here. And these two triangles, I can see are congruent by hypotenuse leg. And that means by corresponding parts of congruent triangles, these two angles here are congruent. And if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, it is a bisector. Well, that was the, um, that was the first way we learned that. Alternatively, you could have done this. Let's just trim this whole thing up and say this. The converse of the angle bisector theorem, if I take that circle away, I can see it a little more clearly. In this case, each of these is the radius of the circle. They're congruent, and I've got right angles here at the points of tangency, and that means these two segments, or I should say this point C, is equidistant from the two rays, and therefore it is on the angle bisector. Well, here we go with an indirect proof for exercise 39. We're given Oh, some very explicit instructions here. We're given well, our given statement and our conclusion, and even the diagram. So well, let's um, let's just do this in two column form. Okay, let's change this up right now. Well, now let's proceed with two column form. Remember, I've got my given up here, and this is my conclusion. I want to prove. Well, I want to prove that this tangent line M is perpendicular to QP. And the way I do that is, well, I show two possibilities. Well, it's, it's a tangent here. It's either, either QP is perpendicular to, to M or some other segment QR, so I got some R on there, is perpendicular to M. Either way, an R could be some any place on that, on that line M. Well, let's get to proving this. I'm going to show my two-column form here show my givens, and they're given. Then I'm going to take this line. This is the negation. This is the opposite of what I'm trying to prove. I'm going to assume that. 
So I'm going to assume that M is perpendicular to QR. QR is over here somewhere. Why? Well, I assume that. And I'm just going to go until I find a contradiction. It won't take long. So look at this. Right away I can see QR is greater than QP. Well, how do I know that? You see, R has to be, or QR has to be longer than the radius since tangent line M only touches the circle at one point. By definition, this point must be outside of the circle. So QR must be longer than QP. There you go. And um, that's going to tell me right away we've got some kind of a contradiction because I know that the shortest distance between a line and a point is the perpendicular distance. So right away this tells me that I'm going to have to reject. And that's right, I'm going to have to reject this choice, this option right here, that some other point, let's say QR is perpendicular to M, reject that. The only thing remaining is this possibility, that QP, which is the radius at the point of tangency, is perpendicular to M. And we're done. Now exercise number 40 is another indirect proof. This time we're proving, well, the other direction on this biconditional proof. It says here, if M is perpendicular to QP, then M is tangent to the circle Q at P. Well, um, I think there's more should have been said there. This is the diagram your author intended. But um, if the only condition is that M, the line M, is perpendicular to QP, this second diagram down here would also be legitimate. And um, that's not really what your author intended. So he's not trying to prove this case. So let's get this one out of there. Let's just say somewhere um, P is on the circle Q. That makes a big difference. So I added that right here to the givens. All right, let's get cracking. Um, well, I know that I can just use a little logic and say, well, I guess if M is, ta if M is tangent to the circle, it's either tangent at point P or at some other point on M. And I'm going to call that point R. So when I draw this, I'm going to say line 2. I'm going to assume instead of tangent at P, it's tangent here at R. Why? Well, because I'm just going to assume that. And I'm going to search for the contradiction. Now, statement three, well, I guess um, QR must be longer than QP. And we know that because the perpendicular distance is the shortest distance from a point to a line. Now, um, we've got two different segments here. These two red segments are different lengths. And that tells me something right away that R is, well, it's not on circle Q. And how do we know that? Well, all radii of a circle are congruent. That's the very definition of a circle. The locus of points equal in a plane equidistant from their given center. So if QR is longer than QP, R is not on the circle. And of course, if R is not on the circle, say it's um, pretty reasonable to say that is a contradiction. It's a contradiction because it can't be a point of tangency if it's not even on the circle. So um, that means if R is not on the circle, we must reject this possibility. I'll call that possibility B. Let's go out with you. And therefore, the only thing that is a possibility the only remaining possibility is my first choice, A, that indeed this line M is tangent to circle Q at point P. Wow, how's that? And now we'll prove that theorem 10-2. Oh, this is an easy one. We did this in our sketchpad lab. Okay, you're given a pair of tangents here. 
and um, the meet at this point S. So now let's trim up these lines, these tangent lines, into tangent segments. Our job is to prove that these two are congruent. Easy enough. Well, let me move this over here so we can start writing our statements and reasons like that. may have to resize this as we go along. Let's just start out. There we go. Uh, circle P and these are tangents. We'll say they're tangent segments. We've already given them, given them a trim. So that's our given. Now, I'm going to draw all these, well, these two radii and this segment right here because any two points determine a unique line ray or segment. And in three, well, I've got two radii and radii of a circle are congruent. We like that. And um, finally, we've got some right angles here. Oh, yes. Oh, let me move that a little bit. I'm in a plane here, and since these line, well, if a line is tangent to a circle, if and only if it's perpendicular to the radius at that point of tangency. That's that theorem right before this, 10-1. So we've got those right angles there. Um, well, you can see it right now I'm taking shape. You can already see the two triangles. I'm going to say this segment is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And then I've got these two triangles. And I'm going to say that they are congruent by hypotenuse leg. So again, I can see these two triangles right there. Hypotenuse is PS, and the legs are, of course, the radii. So we're all set with congruent triangles. Then we're going to invoke our good old friend um, to say these two segments are congruent. CPCTC, well, that's a funny way of saying that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent.